Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and you join me here for a new, sort of new series really of definitely not fried chicken. But before we start, I really should say huge thank you to Merge Games, the publisher of this fabulous little title developed by uh, by Dope Games, if I get the names correct, that is. Yeah, thank you to Merge Games for offering me a key to this game so that I can play with it and show it off to you guys. And hopefully it'll entertain you and give you some insight into what the game is all about. Now, I've been playing it actually for oh, a couple of months or so now, uh, before it was released into early access. I created a small series, which you may already be familiar with, of about five or six episodes, where we built up our little uh, industry and opened up a front, a laundromat, through which we could sell our dubious product to uh, those people who needed it, just as sort of a walk-by sort of um, operation. Uh, but... Since it was released into early access, a number of things have been changed, updated, which, although the game I was playing beforehand is sort of playable still, there are a few things which don't look right in it, so I thought best thing to do is start again afresh and make sure we're taking advantage of all the fixes and improvements they've made in the early access release and the subsequent hot fixes. So here we are, starting off with nothing. We, uh, we want to build our little cannabis production line somewhere around this park. Yeah, dubious, isn't it? But there you go. Actually, it looks like it's um, already being used by some, yeah, ne'er-do-wells camping on a city park. I'm afraid it happens. Anyway, yes, we need to start <laughs> by buying some land in which to build our business. Now, this is where it starts off with. Now, I'm not running the tutorial here because I, I think I know what I'm doing. But that, that is a dangerous thing for me to assume, because I've probably, probably forgotten a lot of stuff I discovered when I first started off in the game those few months ago. So if I get this wrong, then please don't blame me too much. So yes, we need to start by building our plot here. We're not getting any guidance from the tutorial, so hopefully I can remember how it all goes. We need two plots to start with, and they need to connect to a road. And of course, none of the plots that you can buy do actually connect to a road directly. This one sits right over it, so it's kind of... Actually, that might work. That might work as well, actually. Ooh, that, that's a thought. If I... If, things, if I buy that plot, I think I can take the road out of it and put it somewhere else. No, I don't want to do that. We're going to build it here where, where the tutorial suggests. We'll build it in the corner. So we'll start there. We can actually buy a second plot. We're going to need this really to give us the space to build all that we need to build at this stage of the game. So this can either be here. Again, this costs us nothing. These first couple of plots cost us nothing. But beyond this, they start costing real money. And we start with 40 grand in dollars. We can either have a plot along here or the plot above it here. Where do I want to go? Oh, let's go along here. I've done it now. Yes, yeah, so if we want to buy another plot, that's going to cost us 11 grand. I can afford it, but then, I yeah, I need money to make money to start with. So let's not spend what we don't need to spend. So we've got that. Now we do need to connect this to the roads. So we need to actually put in a little bit of road here because there's nothing actually connecting it. This stuff here is pedestrian pathway. So we can't put our delivery vehicles connected to that. So we're going to need to add in a bit of road. Uh, not on that bit of land because we don't own it. Uh, this bit or this bit. And it can either be a bit like that yeah, which kind of works, uh, or like that, which doesn't work at all, or that, and that could work, but we're losing a lot of building space to road, which we don't want to do, or we could, no, that won't work, uh, that might work, yes, a pity, unfortunately, the space left here isn't enough to put in our garages for our delivery vehicles, Annoying that, to be honest, because that would then give us all this space over here to build stuff. Uh, that doesn't really work either. If we go to this, no, if we go there and turn that off, just deselect it. Go back to this corner plot. Put you in there. That might work. I think that works just as well as anything else. 
yeah, so that's what we'll do. We'll start off with that as our plot. So we now need to actually build our little uh, factory for producing um, these uh, organic goodies. We're going to need... Let's, the th first thing I want to do is space it out properly. So I need to know how much space I need for my delivery vehicles, these garages. At the moment, we can only drive mopeds. We can do research, as it were, to upgrade these vehicles. Uh, and actually get vans and cars and stuff. But yeah, you see they're quite big, so it doesn't fit in there, rather annoyingly. So it needs access to the road. And also, if, uh, yeah, when you write, when you use the mouse to rotate, it loses the, uh, the object that you're trying to place. So we put it there, and it needs a bit of space behind it, the bit in green, as you can see, which is where your staff go in and load the vehicle up. So if I put that there, okay, so there's that bit of space there where they need to walk across to load the vehicle up. Actually, I'm wondering if I move that up by three, if I put you there, I'm thinking, and you'll see what I'm doing in a moment. It, well, on the assumption that I know what I'm doing, which is, to be honest, highly unlikely, <laughs> but we can move these around at no cost, I think, so we should be all right. So what I want is a storage room here. So we're going to build this room using the icon here. And we can... No, not there. Uh, I can remove it by doing that. That gets me money back. So we could put it along here. Now you can't put it there. No, nope, because that's where your people need to go to transfer it. That's, that's a used space, so you can't use that. Uh, so if we put this along here, it doesn't need to be too big. In fact, that is probably too big for it. So what I'll do is I'll put a bit of a corridor there. Will that do? That might do. Yeah. And our growing room. So that's our storage room. And our growing room which is where we're going to be growing all our goodies, can go along here. $900. Okay, that will do nicely. We're employing staff who actually don't go home. Once they join our business, they stay in this building all the time. So we're going to need some facilities for them, which includes a toilet room. Ooh, if I put that in there, I'm not sure it's going to be enough. And we've got our corridor. Let's run our corridor all the way down there. So in this toilet room, we're going to need a door so they can get in. We use the yeah the the ordinary door for that. Put you in there. Now in here we're going to need a shower cubicle. So we could put you. Oh, I think there might be room in here after all. Actually, so put you there. And then the toilet cubicle. We could actually put two of these in. Yeah, and we'll see why we need two once we get into the game. We need a sink so they can wash their hands. Let's rotate this. Again, okay, so you lose the, the object you're placing. So we'll put the sink there. We'll put two sinks in and then a hand dryer. Again, that needs two spaces them to use it so that can go there all right so that's the toilet uh now okay so let, let's get to our our main production rooms our storage room which we built first will require a packing station actually let's put the door in so we'll put the door in that's that sort of door and you can go in actually if i put you there and we'll need a door oh uh Right, now because I've got my moped garage here, that blue space is reserved for the for the garage. I can't put a door there because it needs access to that space. Okay, so if we abandon that, let's move that door to there. Let's remove a bit of corridor from there. Okay, and that means I can put my door to the outside world. There. Okay. 
I'm not quite as happy with that as I was with the original design, but there you go. We can change this at any point if we like. It may cost us money, but hopefully we'll start making money at some point. Anyway, the storage room. We're going to need a boxing station where they pack your stuff up. And we can put that there. We'll have two, because hopefully we're going to produce enough stuff that requires it. And a storage shelf or two. And we'll put these close to the door like so okay so we've got restroom facilities toilet facilities for our staff we've got a storage room for the stuff we produce how about the stuff we're actually producing okay at the moment we can only produce basic cannabis and we'll put this here now notice here that is listed the objects we need to grow cannabis let's put three of them in this is the process so you need all three of these items in order to complete the chain of growing your cannabis and preparing it for distribution. So you need one, at least, of each of these types of equipment to do this. So you need a cannabis bed, which is where they actually grow the stuff. So if I put you in there, I'll put two, we'll put three in, shall we? And you'll see the one there is lit up. So we've got uh, enough can we've got a cannabis bed. We need a drying pallet and uh, we could put you here and here that's lit up and a cutting table and we'll just put the one in if we need more we'll work that out okay now these icons here are telling us a variety of things so the cannabis bed can only grow basic cannabis and it's going to be the lowest quality one star if we wanted to grow better basic cannabis, we need to light it. We need to add extra light. But I'm not going to do that for the moment. We're going to put no lights in. Um, what I'm going to hope is that uh, the rest of the processing of this cannabis will hopefully improve it enough to make it two star. We shall see. We shall see. But these bits of equipment here, as you can see, have got three icons on them. And what that... No, don't do that. Come out of build mode. There you go. If I click on that, and if I right click, click on it, that's it. So it tells you what type of plant you can use this object for. So this cutting table can be used for basic cannabis of up to three stars, and also the toasted cannabis, and also Amazonian. And these two we will discover through a sort of research process that we will see. Uh, we, we don't have any of these, so we'll just tick them off. Just left click. And there, and we'll do that. I suppose we don't need to do this because we don't have them at the moment, but we'll take it off anyway just to clarify what we're doing. It's a very big room, but we will need to add more to it, so we'll leave it as quite large. And now, in addition to toilet facilities, my staff will actually need a break room so they can recover their energy from working. They will have time off from working. I'm a very generous employer like that, so we'll define a room, uh, which will be oh, up here, say. How, it probably does need to be quite big, actually. So this is the break room. Again, we'll put a door on there, and we'll put this door there. Okay, and in the break room, they have various bits of equipment. A sofa would be handy, so they can relax and press R to rotate it. This is actually a very big room. We might change this around. And a TV to watch, that will help them relax. Oops, there you go. And it doesn't really tell you much. Oh, it does provide some average entertainment. It does give you some hint as to what it's used for. Uh, they will want a snack machine there. And there's a coffee machine as well, a coffee machine here. You see, we're spending money. We're down to under 35. That We've already spent five grand doing this. So we'll put that there. A bin to keep the place tidy. Tidiness is very important, as we will see. And some entertainment, a really fun machine, a little sort of, yeah, Space Invaders thing. An arcade machine. We'll put that there. We could put another couch in, I suppose. Yeah, let's do that. Like that. Yeah, that'll do nicely. So, we've got now a room for growing cannabis, a room for boxing it up and storing it. 
we've got some toilet and rest facilities for our staff. But what we could do, we could do some landscaping to make... Can I do the landscaping? Um, let's paint this. Oh, nice Ajax post orange. Can I paint this all along here? Oh, I can! No, it's not really orange, is it, at all, to be honest. But then it is midnight, so maybe it doesn't look like orange in the dark. Yeah, we can have put other things in here as well. They're decorative. I'm not sure what good they do us, but they might make our staff feel happier. I don't know. And to be honest, I don't really care at this point. Anyway, staff. Now, we're going to hire workers. Now, with each plot that you buy, you can add two workers to your staff which isn't much, to be honest. Uh, I have a suspicion I would like them to increase that a little bit, certainly as the business gets larger and busier. Uh, you, I, I certainly found myself running out of staff to do the basic stuff. But we shall see. So we're going to want at least two people, uh, workers, who will do the production of the cannabis. An engineer will fix equipment when it fails. Now, that's quite expensive. Expensive. They are, yeah, they cost a lot, 750 to hire, and they cost a dollar more per hour than the workers. I don't know if that, uh, if we need him just yet, but we will definitely need a, need a cleaner to keep the place clean. They're, they're quite cheap. So there's a cleaner. Now, what will happen is as they produce uh, this good stuff, and they go around the factory taking toilet breaks, resting and eating and stuff, they will dirty up the location and a dirty factory produces bad or contaminated product and contaminated product does not sell for anywhere near the same price as good quality uh, product. I'm going to call it product just to sort of, yeah, <laughs> just to make it sound vaguely legitimate. Having got staff, we need to give them jobs to do. Uh, most of the staff, the cleaners, these are the tasks, just do a certain type of job. Uh, the engineer uh, will fix things. We haven't employed one, so they don't have any tasks. Okay, uh, a guard will defend you. So they have fixed tasks that they do, but the workers, you actually tell, have to tell them what parts of the job you want them to do. So for the moment, we want both these members of staff to grow cannabis and also to prepare it for delivery. So box it up, stack it, and put it on the delivery vehicle. So you need to do both those jobs. This is one of the things I always forget when I employ new staff, is making sure they've actually got jobs to do. There is a schedule. At the moment, there is just the one schedule that we've got configured. And people working for you, as I said, don't actually go home. So they switch between working and resting. Now, when you open up a front, a laundrette, or a chicken shop, or whatever, uh, to sell your cannabis through, then people will actually go home at the end of their shift. Uh, but for people working in the production line, they don't actually leave the building, which is why we need the toilets and the restrooms and all the rest of it. This is actually quite a long shift here, so I'm thinking... Actually, if we get them to start work straight away, it's midnight, so I'll employ somebody soon. So let's have them working straight away from midnight. Uh, and we'll have them working... Ooh. I'll make them... Yeah, we'll leave that as... as as a break time. One, two, three, four, five. We'll have them working five hours per shift, I think. One, two, three, four, five, and a break. One, two, three, four, five, break. One, two, three, four. That works out very nicely, actually. That's cool. If we want another schedule, uh, once we start employing more staff, we simply add another schedule here and decide what, they, what jobs they do, when they're working, when they're breaking and so on. A cleaner, for example, might work to a different schedule. Yeah, they could clean while my other workers are on a break. It's, it's often useful to have a variety of schedules, so they take their breaks and they work for different patterns, because if they all work the same hours, you may find they all end up wanting to go to the toilet or take showers or wash at exactly the same time. So having a, a, a toilet room full of people waiting to take a cu cubicle or take a shower just waste, waste production time. So you want to have sort of suitably staggered breaks, I think. Uh, so yeah, you can work, uh, you're working there. And there we go. Uh, and there. Is that about right? That's more or less. Yeah, we will see how that works. 
and the cleaner will work on schedule number one. There you are. So that's our members of staff we've hired. But yeah, they are coming in and they are coming in this way. Now, the important thing about knowing which way they're coming into your building is at some point soon, once we get our business off the ground, we will be attacked by a rival, the Major. And they will come in through a certain door. We've only got one door at the moment. Oh, I haven't got... Why are they not working? Should you not be working? Are you not on shift one? Shift zero? Oh, there's no, <laughs> there's no door into the production room. I am an idiot. Ah, Struth. You see, I forget the simplest things. Put the door there, and the door can go there. Right, so you can actually get in. Yay! And start growing stuff. <laughs> Good. They'll carry on doing that. Uh, yeah, so the, the Major will come in and attack your people, which is why you need a guard. Otherwise, they'll come in, kill your people, and trash your business. And we don't like that. There you go, that's, that's you paved as well. So what you can do to help defend against that is to actually lay down traps, which are these things here, which will bite the legs of anyone who comes into your business. Uh, but the thing is, you don't want it to trap your own staff. So if we put these around here, I think that should be all right. Now, hopefully, my staff won't actually go out and walk beyond there. We see he's walking outside, but hopefully, he won't go beyond that pavement area. So, if we put some more traps, there you are, down here. Now, these do cost money, but I think they're worth it to help defend you against uh, the major. Oh. And there you are, you see, he's going to be drying that cannabis. Lovely, that will be cut up and it will be eventually boxed and ready for delivery. Now, to get deliveries, we need to buy access to a hotline, which means people will ring in and place orders for our organic goodness. Uh, we could upgrade it. Oh, shoot, I've just paid more money. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, well, never mind. Uh, let's go back to our business. Click on that. There you are. And people will start ringing in with their orders for lovely good cannabis. Now, there is a sort of uh, education program here, which gives you extra benefits in addition to research. And this is, this is what's here. Now, what happens here is when you do, when you learn certain mechanics of the game, it'll give you a reward. So we placed a trap at the factory, which gives us a reward, which is a knife. Which means we can arm our guard with something slightly more deadly than a bat, which is what they will get to start with. And if we unlock toasted cannabis or configure products, yeah, we'll learn, we'll gather new tools to help our business. So where are we going to deliver to? We haven't received any uh, hotline orders yet, but we can deliver to certain places already, like a gun shop, a university, or a scrap yard. Why would you want to deliver to those places? Because those businesses give you rewards. They don't give you money, but as you deliver product, product to them, they will give you points which you can use towards purchasing or researching new technology, like toasted cannabis beds, like better drying racks, all that sort of stuff, or really exciting new meth starter packs, uh, all sorts of new tables. These aren't available yet, they'll be coming during the EA, the early access period, or new outfits for our staff, which can be handy, because some of these help them work faster and also help keep the business clean, which is useful. Now, we do want to get into toasted cannabis, so we will want to send stuff to the university. We also want to send stuff to the scrapyard because that gives us a car. Which means one car can deliver four boxes. A moped only delivers one at a time. So let's see what's going on here. So we'll deliver using our moped here. 
to the university. And he will deliver any of these goodies. If you don't want, to, want them to deliver certain types of good, and this is quite likely when you start getting orders, you can deselect them here. So we'll just have him delivering basic goodies. And he's on his way, and we can follow our moped as he makes his way round the town. Quite slowly. Out to the university. Ooh, ouch. Police cars. And he's delivered. You see, there it is. It is good quality. And its current value is 117. But we're not making money on that. We're making points from the university. So from the university. Ooh. Oh, hang on. Right. So this is our competition, the major. Oh, so you're dealing dope now, are you? I know, knew I was... Yeah, this is the tutorial where you learn the basic mechanics of how how you use the various assets in the game. Uh, so we started off in the chicken shop, uh, but he fired us eventually because we were too good. Uh, I'm sending a few, boy, few of my boys around to cluck you up. Right, this, this, is, this is where the danger emerges. So I need to... I don't need to. I could let them kill my stuff and smash my place up. That means I'm going to spend another few hundred dollars employing new staff. I don't want to do that. Let's see if I employ a guard. The music's got more dramatic. A guard here. So we will employ you uh, on schedule zero. Why not? Now, if I go to this guard, I can arm him with either a deadly bat which has those effects there, damage and range, or this knife, which gives you slightly more damage. Costs a bit more, but there you go. So he is armed now with a knife. And let's, oh, that looks like, the, no, that's, they, they come armed with guns, of course. Oh, and he's dead already. Yikes. They're, they are still killing all my staff and smashing everything up. But you see, the traps did some damage to them. I should have had more traps. Down! <laughs> there is a notification window in the game to tell you of significant things of what have happened. Which is down here. So if I open that up. Employee, four employees were killed. The attackers have been defeated. I'm not sure they have, to be honest. <laughs> No, all my staff are dead, so I've got to employ new staff now. This is annoying. Right, let's employ new staff. Okay, so that's uh, two workers and a cleaner. The cleaner will be on schedule one. And the workers, remembering, give them something to do, which is that. Now, you see here that the equipment has these red bars across it, which means the condition of it so it's possible to repair equipment uh, some equipment like lights and heating air conditioning and things like that do degrade over time so they do need maintenance in fact a bit like these traps for which you need an engineer but I'm not sure if these this these bits of equipment the beds and the tables do require maintenance I don't think they do but we're gonna have to uh, sell these I think Let's get back into build mode. Can I sell that? Yeah, we'll sell all this. Uh, that bed looks okay, actually, but I'll sell you. Yeah, we lose money on things we, we have to sell. There you are. That's, that's the way of it. And they broke one of my boxing tables. Well, I'll sell you. I have just the one boxing table for the moment. They damage my. No, they've killed my member of staff. That's that's what that uh, that uh, that symbol there is. I think. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, I think. Right. Anyway, we need. Uh, I've got a bed. I need two more beds. You in there? And you in there? These tables. There and there. And a cutting table. Go and go there. Super. Right, now the way the game works is we're not going to be attacked again for quite some time, unless they've changed that since the game went into early access. I think we should be alright. Now these... Ooh, 
astronaut Jack. Now the astronaut does give the astronaut station does give you some goodies. And I can't honestly remember what they are. I really should have looked that up. Hello. Have you got anything else that can help us? You know, focus. Uh, uh, that gives us the astronaut suit. Now, there is no time on, time limit on this, which means we don't need to deliver to them immediately. And some customers will ring up and say, I need this stuff, but I need it within a certain time frame. So you need to make sure your production line is up to the mark to produce stuff and to get it delivered within that time frame. This one doesn't, so I'm going to accept it, but I'm going to ignore it for the time being. So I don't think I need an astronaut suit until we start doing more complicated drugs like meth and stuff like that. Uh, should we get those traps fixed? Okay, let's hire an engineer then. We'll get an engineer in, hire you, and see if he can fix those traps. There he comes. That's it, so they'll carry on working. We are, we are getting a fair stock of this stuff, so actually what I'll do is we will move these traps out here. Now I could just uh, right click on them there, and which means they are still within my inventory. I've got an inventory of stuff that I've bought, but don't actually have a use for at the moment. So I could do that, but uh, we'll just leave them. We'll take you, and we'll take you as well. Actually, we don't need these at all, do we? Because the Major isn't going to attack us. Okay, another moped driver, uh, which is you. So we'll take you, and we'll slip you in there. And what we'll do is, uh, for deliveries, for our second driver, which is this guy here. Again, he won't take all this other stuff, which we can't sell, because we're not producing it. And he can go to the scrapyard. There we go. So we've got one moped going to the university and one going to the scrapyard. Now, if we look at the university, we've already got four points. And we get four points when we deliver Yep, two good quality cannabis. And as you can see here on the shelves, everything is good quality. So I suppose we could bump up our hotline offer here to say we're offering good basic cannabis. And hopefully someone will ring in and pay for us <laughs> to deliver cannabis to them. Uh, these these dead guys will eventually disappear. I, I, we, do I need an engineer anymore? I don't need the engineer anymore, actually. So I'll fire you to save some money. If I click on you, I can fire you. There you go. You don't work for me anymore. Could I get more workers in to produce more cannabis? I, let's, let's do that, actually. Yeah. So we'll employ a third worker. I'll actually put you on schedule one, doing the same thing. So you've got a slightly different work pattern to our other production workers. Now, the, each each employee will show icons, as we saw above uh, one of the guys there. He's happy. Uh, some guys may be feeling hungry. Uh, if I click on you, it, you can see their stats here. And I think if we look at them... No, you must be the new employee. Where's the other worker? That's you. Uh, compared to you. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. So they degrade at the same time. Uh, so if they're working the same shifts, they will tend to have the same needs at the same time. So as I say, if all my workers decide they, they have a bladder need, they will all go to the toilet at the same time, which just creates queues. You don't like that. Likewise for eating and so on. But you'll see those icons come up above their head. Of course they're not going to do that now. Are they? Oh there, he's hungry. So he has a need for food. Not a huge food need, but a little bit of one. In terms of stats, in terms of this as a tycoon type game, there are monetary stats here. Uh, sales breakdown, sales on the hotline. We haven't sold anything, that's the trouble. 
production is here. So we are producing. Yep. Yeah, so obviously that's that's where our staff was slaughtered. <laughs> so we're picking up production here in hours and days. And also we're not producing any of the uh, toasted cannabis yet because we don't have that research done. And that's our cleaner. Oh, and you can see here is grain. Yeah, we're getting sort of dirt and detritus on the floor. So our cleaner is coming in to deal with that. There are overlays which help us see this. Uh, so where's cleanliness? There you are. Nothing terribly dirty. Uh, so either very clean or it's a one level of dirt, two levels. I think if we remember the cleaner's task, if we go to our cleaner here, was to clean dirty floors three plus. Yeah, so I don't think they clean anything until it's at least th level three dirty. Which uh, obviously introduces the risk of contaminating our produce. Oh! Why are they not asking us for, for drugs? Because I've not turned the hotline on. I know it was something simple. There you go. You bet. You probably noticed that about 15 minutes ago, didn't you? Don't. Right. Okay. Someone should start ringing in soon and ask for stuff. We Yay! <laughs> Thank you. Caroline Hughes is ringing up. Needs some stuff. And we'll get $936 for eight basic cannabis. I'll accept that. And we need a moped to go there. Uh, so this moped could go to Caroline. And in fact, both of them can go there in addition to their deliveries to the University of the Scrapyard. And what will happen is as our mopeds deliver to Caroline this yep this counter which is showing zero of eight at the moment it's a pity you can't zoom in on this um, will count up how many deliveries Caroline has received I had planned to skip right ahead to where we had completed our first contract with Caroline um, and I've, I've, we've moved on a good few hours time moves on here in minutes and hours so we're still on day one and it's only quarter past 11 in the morning here. And we've actually already got a few more orders coming in. Uh, we've got Caroline's order, which we've currently supplied five of her required eight so far. We then had an order from Mackenzie, which I'm, I'm also supplying. And we've got a couple more coming in from Brooklyn, Julian and Cooper, which I'm not uh, servicing at the moment. They, there's no time limit on those, uh, so I can safely, I think, ignore them until we've dealt with one or two of our, of our other orders. I've also, to help progress this, and because we are getting a good stock, a good progress through the production line of uh, our packaged cannabis, uh, I've actually employed a third moped driver who is supplying Caroline as well as Mackenzie. However, uh, I've been for sh caught, for sh caught short <laughs> in that leap forward by a member of staff which was oh he's taking a shower however can I can I get to you okay so which member of staff are you you're one of our members of staff here you Alice you are you got you had very bad hygiene and you actually turned green, which unfortunately you can't see, see here now because she's <laughs> she, she's thrown up and has now gone into the shower. So she's recovered slightly from that. But as you can see from the overlay, uh, it's got very, if I click it right, it has got very dirty around here. Yeah, three and four. So where's my cleaner doing? He's cleaning stuff. Oh, it looks like someone dropped a cup there. Yeah, that's not good. There's a bin. Put it in the bin, people, honestly. Oh, they're throwing up again. This is not good. Keep on showering. But it looks like everyone's okay. You just plenty of time in the shower, washing your hands and so on, and you should be fine. Okay, well, uh, get rid of that. And uh, how close are we to getting Caroline dealt with? as it were. Oh, another moped is going up there. You see it's now showing five out of eight. We're getting there. So again, I'll, I'll just skip forward on the other. So on the other side of a sexy video effect, we should see Caroline uh, dealt with. <laughs> and we should start seeing some profit. 
As we can see, Caroline has now received seven of her required eight packages of our lovely organic produce, and our moped, moped number one, is about to deliver the eighth and final. So let's follow that up, which should give us a nice $936, I think it was, profit, or income at least, not necessarily profit, to that order. So parks up, beeps to say I'm here, and somewhere... Caroline should emerge from her building and pick up our delivery. Which is a bit is that her there? She's a bit slow. We should see our figure at the top here, 15492, have a nice little green addition to it. What is her? Ah. So she no, stop, stop that. Oh. Where are we going? Let's go back to Caroline. I've lost her. There she is. <laughs> Presumably she might be going in that door there, perhaps. She's got a long walk for us to collect. Where is she going? Oh, she is going there. Good, good. In she goes, and we should get... Come on. Pay for it. Yes, we're back above $16,000. Let's go back to our business. And we'll see that uh, Caroline has now disappeared off our list. So that first moped is only delivering to the university at the moment. We can see how far we've got in terms of delivering points, as it were, to the university, or indeed any of these uh, local businesses on here. So we've got 14 points so far at the university. We just need 20 to get the uh, the toasted cannabis, which I'd like to have, because that that, uh, that gives us bigger, more income. It's a bigger price for that, a better price. And the scrapyard, 12 points, 90 to get to, to the car. That's a lot, isn't it? So what I'll do, uh, we're running on a bit here, so I will, I think, call this episode to, or draw this episode to a close. And say thank you so much for joining me today for this uh, restart of my definitely not fried chicken journey. Uh, restarting my business. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, then please do let me know. A little click on the old thumbs up button to give me a like would be lovely. Even better, if you've got any thoughts about what the game, what I'm doing with the game, or the game itself, or suggestions for how I could uh, make more money, be more profitable, or progress that much more quickly in the game, then please do just drop a note into the comments box below. Other than that, of course, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, you could do that now, and that way you'll know when I upload another one of these or any of my other Let's Play series. But from me, Ajax Post, here in Definitely Not Fried Chicken, until the next time, bye-bye for now.